Dana Taylor here with Dainty Acres Italian Greyhounds. Today I'm going to show you how to make a leather leash. Here I've got a martingale collar on a sixth foot lead. I want my lead long enough so I can let my dog out and let the judge see my dog without my feet or my legs in the way. Here's what we're making today. It will eventually be a martingale collar and a leash, but today we're going to work on the leash. This is a six foot length. I've pre-measured out enough leather lace that I'm going to use uh, to braid the leather leash and then I've picked out some jump rings and beads that I will thread through. The first step is that I'm going to set up the end of my leather lace here. I'm going to wrap it around a split ring that's going to serve as the, as the ring that will attach to the, that will attach to the martingale. So I'm going to cut it, I'm going to bevel it, I'm actually going to, going to cut a little bit of the tip off and then I'm going to clip it and I'm going to weld it or glue it together. For the sake of time, I've already glued it, it's dry and I'm now threading it through the split ring and back into the, jump, the two jump rings, the bead, and then the other two jump rings. It's important to get the two matching leather laces exactly perfect right there in that ring. The weight, the pull from the dog is going to pull on one, one of those laces if it's a little bit shorter than the other one. So I want them exactly even so both those leather laces take the weight of the pull when a dog is pulling up against that lead. It takes me a lot longer than this to get my leash set up to braid. But because this is video and I'm able to hyperlapse and I'm able to crop, we're going to start braiding. I'm here at my jeweler's bench and I'm able to put the camera on the braid so that you can see what I'm doing. But I have a hook right above me uh, that's attached to a shelf that's anchored to the wall real tight. And I can put some pressure on my braid by pulling down on it. And you'll notice that I um, will take breaks to readjust that braid and get it where I have that tension I want on it. There are other ways to do braid tension, but this is what works for me. This leash, uh, the customer wanted to have a bead at about 14 inches, so when the mm -hmm. leash is in her hand, she can um, feel for that bead and know uh, the length that she's at. So we're putting that bead on at the 14 inch mark. I'm using uh, eighth inch leather lace. It's a great medium. Um, the material is varying in its suppleness. The firm, more, the more firm leather lace that I work with is usually stronger. The soft buttery uh, leather lace is uh, a little bit more fragile. So I prefer the stiffer uh, eight inch. But with that said, it makes it a little bit hard to braid and it needs some water. So you'll see me dunking it in a bucket of water periodically to soften the leather. Okay, we're coming to the end. So um, I have, uh, you'll see the tail. You'll see these two pieces that are actually held together by a bead. And I'm going to just back and forth pull that loose end through and then even the last couple I will pull through with a pair of pliers. In my measurement of leather lace I have enough of this tail that will um, go back into those jump rings the bead through the split ring and then back down into the uh, jump rings and bead and um, that will be where I glue it. I've got a clip on it to let it dry and I'll come back to it and I will manually move the beads back down over the glue weld and um, tighten everything up. Still to come, a video on making a martingale, the part that goes around the neck, and the handle.